how to pass glucose challenge test if you are on a very low carbohydrate diet or on the carnivore diet we'll find out in today's video welcome back to my channel progress through life which is a fancy way of saying getting older your doctor may ask you to take a, a glucose challenge test to see if you are pre-diabetic or diabetic and if you are pregnant anywhere in the weeks 24 to 28 you will be also asked to take the glucose challenge test to see if you have gestational diabetes now all of us in the carnival community are quite confident that we aren't insulin resistant also people that are very low carbohydrate diet which is anywhere under 50 grams of carbohydrates a day or zero carbohydrate diet go into the test confident that we'll pass it and then we fail it and so after that you have to go for this three hour test when they make you drink 100 grams of a sugary concoction and they draw your blood three times to see if you are able to clear glucose from your blood efficiently it's not a fun test at all and if you can avoid it you are better off and the question gets to be why very low carbohydrate people or zero carbohydrate people fail the glucose challenge test well i have very interesting answers for you and also what to do about it so let's solve the mystery of why you would fail a glucose challenge test if you are on a very low carbohydrate diet or on carnivore diet and here's what happens if you're on the carnivore diet or very low carbohydrate diet for the last few months, your body will make changes to its metabolism. So it starts with insulin production. You just don't need that much. Your pancreas just doesn't need to make that much insulin because there's not a lot of glucose to be pulled out of your blood. Now, another aspect to it is that we still need some glucose for our brain. Our muscles can function just fine on the free fatty acids and ketones but our brains need some very little uh, glucose so whatever your body will make it will get transported to your brain and your muscles will become insulin resistant to make sure that that very little glucose that you need goes to your brain and nowhere else so the next thing that happens if you go for 50 grams of a sugary drink your muscles will be insulin resistant and your body will take longer to deal with all this glucose that you all of a sudden have in your blood. So if your blood gets drawn one hour after you drank 50 grams of sugar in 10 ounces of water, you are likely not be able to clear all the glucose to bring it under 130. So the next thing that happens is you get your results and you failed your glucose challenge test. And then you are wondering, what's going on here? I'm not eating any carbohydrate or hardly any. I feel great. I'm otherwise healthy. How could I be all of a sudden diabetic? And that's the reason. Just your body made the adaption to be in a very low glucose environment and whatever little glucose your body has to make, it goes to your brain. Now, what happens next, your provider will have to send you for the three hour test where you have to be fasted. Then they will draw your blood. Then they will make you drink genetically modified high fructose corn syrup, literally from genetically modified corn. Uh, it's 100 grams of it. And then they will draw your blood three times every hour to see if you are indeed diabetic. And most people that fail the first one usually pass the second one. And this is precisely what happened to me in my first pregnancy. I was so confident because I was on a low carbohydrate diet. I was doing everything right. I was feeling great. And then I failed my glucose challenge test. And my midwife had to send me for this three hour glucose test. And I did not enjoy it. Three hours in that lab at seven months pregnant not fun at all so this time around to save myself the headache and the trouble of going through three hour test 
I prepared myself for the first one. So what I did is I added 150 grams of carbohydrate to what I eat per day. And I did that for 10 days prior to the date of the glucose challenge test. Now, you don't have to eat highly processed, refined carbohydrates. What I did, it was mostly I ate fruits and um, honey. And with today's fruit, which is optimized for sugar content, a large apple, a, a large banana, and a couple tablespoons of honey will do it. Uh, so you don't need to eat uh, Snicker bars and uh, ice cream. And then when I had to drink the uh, sugary concoction, 10 ounces of 50 grams of sugar in warm water in the span of five minutes, one hour right later, my glucose levels were at 91 milligrams per deciliter and the cutoff is 130. So I was well within the range. Now, if you are truly diabetic, it doesn't matter what you do, you will likely uh, fail both of these tests, but you want to know whether you are diabetic or not. But for those of us that live very low carbohydrate and carnival uh, lifestyles, this test is simply a false positive. So by adding 150 grams of carbohydrates for 10 days to your diet, you kind of allow your body to adapt to more glucose rich environment so that your pancreas can produce more insulin and your muscles can open up its uh, insulin receptors. So when it comes to the test, you can actually pass it easily and don't bother with the three hour test to determine whether you are truly diabetic. At first, I thought this test was totally idiotic, especially uh, it produced a false positive for me, but then I thought about it and if you are on the standard American diet where people consume excess of 300 grams of carbohydrates a day, your body's ability to handle 50 grams of sugar within uh, one hour is not so crazy. And I guess it is a decent uh, telltale sign whether you are going towards diabetes or not. All right, this will do it for this week's video. If you haven't yet, subscribe. Hit that notification bell and send it to anybody that is on a low carbohydrate diet, is pregnant and has to do the glucose challenge test. That might save them a lot of headaches for going for this three hour test. Bye.